Okay, today I'm going to talk about Arduino interrupts. And interrupts are used to break normal program execution so that immediate attention can be given to uh, another process. So if you have um, if you have a critical need to stop the program with what it's currently doing and do something else, that's where you'd want to use interrupts. And for the Arduino, there's two types of interrupts. There's hardware interrupts, and those are activated by I.O. pins, depending on the model for the Arduino Uno. Those are going to be... Uh, digital pins two and three and then the other type of interrupt is a software interrupt via timers so a software interrupt would work so say you wanted to stop program execution every 10 seconds and then do something you would set up a a timer interrupt software interrupt to do that okay so the circuit i'm going to use to demonstrate the hardware interrupt is going to be using this uh, passive infrared motion sensor and if it detects motion, uh, it sends this green wire, yeah, the data out pin high, and that goes into the Arduino digital pin two. And then the sketch I'm going to show you, it, it's reading that pin, and if it detects uh, text motion, it sends uh, digital right high on data pin seven, and that's just going to light up this little uh, LED. Okay, so this is the sketch that goes with that circuit. And these are the two pins. Uh, sensor pin is the input pin, and that goes to data pin 2. The LED pin, which I'm calling notify pin, is output. That's data bit 7. So initialize those in the setup, and then in the loop, it's going to read from that sensor pin, and if it detects high, so if it detects motion, it's going to output high on the um, notify pin for 3 seconds and then turn it back low. So the simulate why you may want to use a um, an interrupt I've got this kind of ridiculously long loop so after it after it detects the sensor pin um, I'm going I'm gonna go through this loop just to slow down the program or make it go through all these steps it's just doing something with a counter so what's gonna happen if um, if motion is detected while it's down in this loop somewhere it's not gonna. It's not gonna send any signals to the notify pin. The only time this sketch where it detects the the read uh, reads from that sensor pin is right here. So again, if it's if it's down here, it's not even gonna check that sensor pin. So if it's something critical that you have to you really have to detect motion for a real sketch, this is a, a dummy one. Um, you would want to use an interrupt. So before I do the interrupt, I'm gonna demonstrate. Um, that circuit how how you'll miss that sensor pin going high okay so what I'm gonna do is just take this piece of paper and uh, hold it over the uh, the passive infrared motion sensor and trigger the LED to um, to light up and which you'll see sometimes it'll trigger it and sometimes it won't and when it won't trigger it that means it's the sketch is stuck in that big long loop okay so let's see okay so that triggered it that did not. Well, that did. I think it. Let me move a little bit. I think it's catching me. Okay. So that triggered it. That did not. Yeah, see? See, it'll miss it sometimes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so to change this sketch to use interrupts. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this little section of code. Okay, cut that. And I'm going to put that in a, a new function. Uh, I'll just call it notify. Okay, so this is going to be the interrupt service routine. And you should know that these interrupt service routines cannot take any parameters and they cannot return any values. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. Okay. Okay, so to make the interrupt work, we're gonna call an Arduino function called attach interrupt. And then you give it which interrupt pin you wanna use. And for the Arduino Uno, uh, zero means you're using digital pin two. And if you use one, 
that means you're using Digital Pin 3. And depending on what type of Arduino you're using, those can switch. And some Arduinos have more interrupt pins than the Uno. The Uno just has two. Okay, so then you give it the name of the function that you want to call when the interrupt um, occurs. Okay, and then you want to give it a keyword of how you, or under what conditions you want the, the interrupt to fire. So rising means if uh, data pin 2 goes from low to high, it, the sketch is going to stop whatever it's doing. If it's, if it's buried down in this all these for loops, and it's going to call this immediately, run this, and then return to where it was. Okay. The other keyword you can use is falling. So that's obviously going if that pin goes from um, high to low. And then there's also change. So it could go from either high to low or low to high, and that'll fire it. And also low and high. So if you, you were to put low here, that interrupt uh, would go if that pin was low, run the routine. When it got back, um, basically it would just continue to run. If, as long as that pin was low, it would just keep re repeating itself. Same for high. If uh, if you put high right there, that interrupt will continually run as long as the pin is high. And there's some other things you should know. You cannot put uh, any other f uh, functions in here that cause interrupts because this this blocks all interrupts from occurring. So that also means. Uh, for example, the delay function, the Arduino delay and millis, those actually call internal interrupts. So you cannot do a delay, which I actually did. So that's going to come out. Okay. But you can use a function called delay microseconds. That causes a delay, but does not, um, it does not use interrupts okay okay so just kind of review like I said once you once you attach an interrupt uh, basically you're you're tying that pin on rising to this function so that no matter where where in this loop that um, that that your code is executing it's gonna immediately stop and run this interrupt service routine and then return. Okay, so I'm gonna upload this. And of course, let's try that again. Okay. Okay, so I had to make one small, or two small adjustments to the code. This, the delay microseconds takes an unsigned integer, so I, c I can't put 300,000 in there. That's that's way too big. So that means the LED is going to flash um, for a, a much briefer time than it was earlier, but that's okay. And then I move the uh, this attach interrupt. I originally had that down in the loop, but it doesn't. There's no reason for it to be there. You just do it in the setup. Okay. So now, now the circuit should detect um, motion regardless of where it is in the code because it should run the interrupt and yeah, it's kind of hard to see that light because it flashes so fast but yeah see so now every time it's going to run so you would want to use an interrupt if for for like critical parts of your circuit or code um, where you you have to stop you want to stop and do something immediately that's where you'd use uh, this hardware interrupt. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, demonstrate a software interrupt, and this is using the Timer One library. So I don't have the um, the infrared sensor attached to the circuit anymore. So basically, I just have the LED pin um, hooked up to uh, digital pin seven. Okay, so to do the software interrupt with Timer One. In the setup, you're going to do initialize, and then you're going to give um, how many microseconds, um, basically the period, how many microseconds between each uh, interrupt. Okay, so I'm giving it uh, 500,000 microseconds, so it's 500 milliseconds, so it's a half of a second. Okay, and then and then you do timer one dot dot attach interrupt, and again, I'm using a notify sketch, but I I changed it up just a little. Um, 
basically it's it's going to check a state variable which is a boolean and if it's false it's basically going to turn the pin on high and then set the state to true um, if the state was true it's going to set the notify pin low and set the state to false so basically it's just going to flash the pin um, every every 500 milliseconds it's going to go off then 500 milliseconds later it's going to go on and one thing you should know if you use variables down in this interrupt service routine you should preface the declaration with this volatile keyword otherwise you may have problems because of the way the microprocessor may try to cache that um cache that variable or something like that and um it may work without the volatile but you you should really use it it's not that big a deal and with that volatile then you can also use i'm not doing it but the state variable inside the regular loop if you wanted to so it can be shared um but you have to be careful if you were to do something like that because you don't know where where in this loop you're going to be when that interrupt fires off so anyway um let me show you the um, the actual circuit running. Okay, so this is essentially a blink sketch, but instead of using the delay function, it's using an interrupt and a timer interrupt, software interrupt. And that, that software interrupt is going to be more accurate than the delay in general. But um, so anyway, the, that's just a quick demonstration of how you would use both hardware and software interrupts for the Arduino. Thank you for watching the video.